How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, earlier this morning I did a video about the recovery efforts over in Puerto Rico. And my royal daughter um, had mentioned to me about um, the Virgin Islands and all those other islands that have been greatly affected just as well as Puerto Rico. Now many of us know that on those islands is us. It's a lot of us around the globe and especially on these islands. Now one thing that I want the royal family to know, I did not lose sight of the royal family at all. I should have spoke more in depth about what we deal with because we always get the latter in. So anytime it seemed like I'm slipping or not speaking correct, y'all have full range to get on me and say, what's up, true royal? Have you lost sight? Have you lost your way? Have you forgot about our people? I have no problem being corrected. I should have been more direct. And usually I am direct, so I fell short on doing that video um, um, about the Virgin Islands. I should have pointed us out more. I have no problem being corrected. Um, and, I, and I'm in total 100% agreement. They are getting their n nigga moment because the people, the majority of the people that are in the Vo Virgin Islands um, feel like they are not us. They feel like they are better than us, and they are getting their nigga moment, and they are f they are feeling the feeling what we deal with daily in this dead ass system. So yes, I'm a thousand percent agreement with that, and they will continue to feel that. And it's terrible that they have to get something so drastic to happen to them to realize. You never was them. They never did care about you. See, that's that great separation. That's the shit that they did when we was in bondage and we was on these plantations and they would make the light-skinned folks feel like they was better than the dark-skinned folks and the shit ain't never left. We didn't ran with it. We still have that problem. So no, um, I didn't lose sight, but I should have been more direct. Thank you for correcting me, my royal family. So, I am going to de de dedicate this to my royal daughter. She know who she is. And I did do my research. And I'm going to point some things out to y'all before I get much deeper into this. It is quite ironic. When I googled the Virgin Islands and, and the people in the Virgin Islands, you don't see us already anywhere. They, you know... I. I, I put it like after, however the hell I Googled it, I put um, Virgin Islands and after the hurricane. Now, when I put um, Puerto Rico and after the hurricane, you would see the people that live over there. But then they, all they would just is show these pictures. Now, you do see a picture here, and that is definitely some black folks. That is definitely us. And you can see how terrible it continues to look after the hurricane. But to really find us... I couldn't find us. I found a whole bunch of white folks when I Googled it another way, and I ain't gonna even tell that. People had to find it. And I said, it's something up to this bullshit. So I'm sitting up here looking, and they showing all the disaster. That's all they showing is disaster pictures and just a few people. But then, when I Googled the Virgin Islands and the people of the Virgin Islands, this is what I get. These type of pictures. These pictures here. Oh, you see us looking real beautiful in our garb and everything like this. And these people are usually on display for the tourists because they make a lot of money off of these fucking cave beasts. See, with they busted ass bodies. So, in order for us to make our coins, we have to display ourselves in these fashions damn near year round in order to eat. This is in St. John, Virgin Islands. I said, isn't that ironic? 
Isn't that ironic? Because, you know, they want to see what the culture look like and they're willing to play, pay us to perform like they always do. Wanted to point that out. I'm not going to point them out, but that was just quite ironic. Now, these very folks that live here, live over here, our folks on these islands, been living there all their life. When they're a disaster to hit, we're going to go right back. This is what you see. It's like no people exist. Hmm. So anyway, my royal family. Now let me continue on. I have an article to read. And y'all going to be really surprised what I found. Okay, this woman here is, I can't pronounce her full last name, but I'll do the best I can. Her name is Pamela Hughes, and she works for the U.S. government. And let me read, I'm not going to read all of this article. I'm going to read what's necessary, and this article came out um, yesterday, in fact. So I'm, everything that I'm dealing with is updated. At a press conference called by the U.S., Excuse me, at a press conference called by the government house and held at the West Indy Company this afternoon, Pamela Hughes, Deputy Secretary for the U.S. Housing and Urban, or HUD, HUD, announced they allocated $243 million to the U.S. Virgin Islands monies that will be used in effort to house Virgin Islanders displaced by Hurricane Irma and Maria. The, the, the two Category 5 storms that slammed the islands in September. Okay, let's see here. Let me get to the good, 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 good part here. So something very interesting here that I was reading. Now she, um, oh, here it is. So the deputy secretary, she was representing Trump, Vice President Pence, and Ben Carson, who's the head of HUD. And it says here, the administration will continue to rely, rely on Federal Emergency Management Agency for information, as well as for information from HUD. Regional office in Puerto Rico re, uh, re related to the damages damages the, ter the territory sustained. She said HUD was not here to dictate how the territory rebuilds but further to facilitate its successful resurgence with support in various ways, chief among them funding. We are very, very impressed with the plans that are underway prior to Irma and Marie hitting the islands, she said. We are here to support the U.S. Virgin Islands. We are not here to tell you how to rebuild your community. All right, you get that. Hmm, interesting. Well, I'm going to tie it all in. Y'all know I am. So they got a vast interest, and that ain't a lot of money. But they do have a vast interest over there for a reason. So, who pops up yesterday? Oh, Bill Clinton. He was over there yesterday, sliding through. Wait a minute. In fact, because I don't know the time difference, let's say today. Or however that shit falls, because it's this is dated February seventh, two thousand eighteen, and so I have a video to show the royal family. I will put the link to this article so y'all can read more about the details and stuff. But um, I have actually two. I have after this video, I have another video. But old Bill Clinton is over there. You know when his rotten ass is over there, it's for a reason. Anytime they over there is for a reason. It's always to benefit them. Basically to further rape and control that country. So let's listen to as much as you can stand. To welcome President Bill Clinton to Dominica today. 
President Clinton has been a long-term friend to Dominica and the entire Caribbean community. And I've had the pleasure of working with him and the Clinton Climate Initiative since 2012, developing clean, renewable energy projects in Dominica. As a matter of fact, the Clinton Climate Initiative were exceptional in assisting us in developing our geothermal uh, project as our advisors. Since the devastation of Hurricane Maria, President Clinton's commitment to Dominica's future has only grown stronger. He immediately pledged that he would do whatever he could to help us rebuild as the world's first climate resilient nation. And, and since then, he has backed up that pledge with action. In November last year, he joined me at the CARICOM UN high-level pledging conference and issued a rallying cry to the international community to fund our plans for long-term sustainable development. Just last week, he convened the Action Network on Post-Disaster Recovery in New York City, which will bring partners together from across sectors to make concrete commitments to implement projects supporting the region's long-term recovery. I am grateful that as one of the Action Network's first three commitments to action, the Digital Foundation will be repairing or rebuilding seven schools and 360 homes in Dominica that were damaged or destroyed by Maria. And today, our relationship with the Clinton Climate Initiative will grow deeper as we announce our plans to work together to develop a rapid integrated res resource plan for Dominica's energy sector. I look forward to working with President Clinton and the Clinton Climate Initiative as we transform Dominica's energy sector into a model of resilience that the entire region and world can follow. It is now my distinct honor and pleasure to introduce the founder of the Clinton Foundation and the 42nd President of the United States of America, President Bill Clinton, to say a few words to us. Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good day. I'm, I'm very honored to be in Dominica and very proud that the Clinton Foundation has been given the opportunity to work alongside the Prime Minister. I, uh, I want to thank Prime Minister for the opportunity to meet with uh, the President, his Cabinet, and others while I'm here and say to all of you I appreciate the heroic efforts you are making to overcome the impact of the natural disasters that have befallen you but even more to take advantage of this moment to position your country to handle the next disasters better and to respond in a way that will improve both your chances of surviving the climate change that is roiling the world and prospering from it. And I thank the representatives who are here from Nomlek as well. And um, I want to say a special word of thanks to the government of Norway, which for now for six years has made possible our participation in this. Uh, they believed when we first asked them that Dominica in particular and the Caribbean in general could lead the world to a whole new way of producing clean power, reducing the threat of climate change, and improving the economy of developing countries. And they bought the argument I was making that the Caribbean could literally lead the way, that we had a chance to make this the first sustainable region of the world. And now the Prime Minister has said, the beginning with his great speech to the UN, that he wants Dominica to be the first totally climate resilient country on earth. I'd also like to thank uh, 
my good friend Dennis O'Brien and uh, Digicel for the commitments they've already made to help you rebuild. Uh, we've been working together now. This is our uh, eighth year in a long-term project to, to try to help Haiti recover from the earthquake of 2010. And I say that because uh, uh, I could never have done what we were did there without Digicel, and they're a good partner. If they tell you they're going to do something, it takes three years, they'll be there three years from now. If it takes five years, they'll be there five years from now. And that should be a source of great encouragement to you. Uh, and uh, the, our will, I'm sure, have to put in a decade of this before we're done in Haiti. And uh, I think that's a good thing. It's easy for people to move in when there's a disaster and everybody's torn up and upset. And you forget that 90% of the work has to be done after the debris is cleared, after the tragedy is passed. So I'm very grateful. I, I would like to say just a word about uh, the Prime Minister mentioned the meeting we had in New York last year on this. I don't mean to be rude, my royal family. I cannot take it no more. This lying motherfucker. I just can't. I can't, I can't sit through this. This is an insult. This is a motherfucking insult. I just can't. Even though this is all update and I like giving y'all updated, I cannot sit through this. And then this motherfucker mentions Haiti and they done stole the money from Haiti. And then he talks about how when there is a disaster, how people come in and steal. Where's the motherfucking money that you stole? You and your greasy ass wife stole from the jump. I just simply can't. I have to move on, my royal family. This shit is redundant. We hear the same stuff. You got black folks sitting up in there posturing and stuff, listening to this greasy motherfucker. Y'all can listen. Y'all can read the article, but I just simply can't. There is no shade to the royal family, but I'm going to move on and play the next video to show what they really doing behind the scenes. Now, this is what they're doing here. Just listen to it. Keen was among a few volunteers from Nebraska who were chosen to help restore power in the Virgin Islands following destruction caused by a hurricane in 2017. Keen, a senior planner in the Columbus office, and Dennis Wademan, a superintendent for the Scotts Bluff area, flew over to the Virgin Islands on December 12th for a 30-day trip where they would work to restore power to the island's residents. It was just a neat experience to see everything. The people were super nice. That sticks out. I mean, they were just very appreciative. Uh, thank you. And their, the way their, their lifestyle is a lot different than it is here. I mean, they're very laid back and it's always hello, good morning, good morning, good morning. It's just, it's real neat that way. Keen says traveling was difficult at times with no road signs and very tight roadways to travel on. There's no decent path to go from one point to the other. The way we got around was with an iPad, and it had the whole system on the iPad, and so we could go from pole to pole and punch in a pole number and find out where we were at and where we wanted to be. Keen says a lot of islanders have spent months without power because of the damage, and says there was a lot of work that needed to be done when they arrived on the island. Keen says after linemen would go through and patch up damaged services, Keen and crew would go through and take notes addressing changes that needed to be made. Going back over the whole island again to look at everything that they did kind of on a temporary basis, kind of put it together with a band-aid if you will. Yeah. So we went and wrote notes about all of that stuff that needed to be addressed in the future. So I mean there was a lot of stuff, a lot of safety hazards that if they didn't address it someone could get themselves in trouble. With Keenan Wayman returning, two new MPPD volunteers took their place to continue the effort in T.J. Rutledge of Shatterin and Mick Schnell of Plattsmith. I'm Columbus News Team's Granite, News Channel, Nebraska. Okay, my royal family. So anyway, you got this so-called company down there that calling they sell volunteering to help restore power, and really they're taking a sur survey what they're doing is they're taking a survey, checking the infrastructure out to see what parts of the structure out there on the island is still in good tack and could take it. And then whatever parts of those terrain that could take it, they're going to wipe that out, 
tell these people, oh, you can't live here no more. Here, you can get you some free housing someplace, somewhere. Just get your ass off of there. And they're either going to put houses there for themselves or put another tourist attraction there because that's where they like to go do their dirt. This is all it's about. Then you got Bill Clinton there. When you see a lot of white faces showing up after the disaster, this is all about benefiting them. I'm sick of this shit. That's why I couldn't even get through Clinton with his old dusty ass. He up there decrepit and all that, but he see money. And just sitting up there with a straight face. And then you hear the other white boy talking about how fucking nice we is and stuff like that. That's our damn problem. We too nice. Why ain't nobody held their feet to the fire about that money in 80? And then here they come again. Here they come again. And then they'll act like, oh, we're, um offering something yeah the money that you stole from motherfucking Haiti bitch who are these people are crooks so based on my research they are 10% only 10% of anything has been taken care of over in the Virgin Islands and all the other St. Thomas St. John's and all those other islands ain't nothing being done ain't nothing being done and then when you see some, it ain't nothing more than a photo op. And, and as usual, just showing the little conference, you didn't see even Harley Body there. And we too fucking nice. I would be on that motherfucker. Where's that money? Embarrass him. Make that shit international. But we sit up here and be quiet. And we don't want to be rude. And we don't want to put them on the spotlight. And say, where the fuck is that money that you stole? People donated that money, and the Clintons pocketed it, and they built six houses that nobody can't even live in, and walked. And then here you come washing your ass, then here you come sending in a company that don't even make sense. They ain't even talking about putting up no power. They taking surveys? What the fuck you need? They good for taking surveys. They good for doing investigations, but you never hear the result about it or anything about it. It's to benefit them. It's always something sinister behind it. They always come in there, sin it come in greasy. They don't do nothing on their own fruition. They don't come in for nothing for free. They getting paid for everything. And they go back and report and they put their whole little shit together. Trust and believe um, Bill Clinton know that them people was out there doing what they doing. So that's all I can report, my royal family. And like I said, I did my due diligence and I am a avid researcher. And then when I'm trying to find our people that's really suffering, this is what they want to show. They want to show us looking like this, which is beautiful and fine and stuff. But that's what they want to see. Remember that. That's what they want to see. They don't want to deal with truth. There's always a reason behind whatever it is. And I'm looking and I'm searching frantically because I know if you see terrain like this, you got to see some people somewhere going through something. And then I see some bullshit like this, some white folks just living over there, whatever them motherfuckers is and stuff. I didn't got real pissed off. And yeah, I did find this. This is when the shit popped off. Okay, that's the British Virgin Islands. That's when the shit popped off. They over in the Caribbean. Other than that, mm -mm, nothing else. Y'all can look it up. Show me some. Maybe I missed some. Maybe I, um, that's all I could find. That's all I could find was this. Just showing, showing, um, you know, you see a sister here with her baby. But, I mean, it's few and far between. That's basically what I'm saying. I didn't got myself upset because it's always the same old shit. So, um, I thank all of y'all expressing how you felt getting on me because I didn't you know speak clearly like I usually do because in the end when any type of disaster pop off we get crumbs or nothing always remember that never lose sight of that We're, you know and then when they do put us in a in some photos and talk to us that's nothing more than a photo op and a feel-good story to give the world, the illusion, I'm helping these sad, pitiful people at the end of the day. So ain't nothing going on. It's the same old, same old. And 
Puerto Rico is getting more of a spotlight because the more, majority of the people over there are an acceptable look. But they get in a nigga moment. I totally agree with the royal family. And more will get their nigga moment because you think you better than us. It's interesting how people can be. So anyway, my royal family. I will always do my due diligence for the royal family. Continue to suggest the videos that you want to suggest. Always render your voice with your beautiful divine words. Vent and purge. Scream and holler and cuss. Let's work it out. As long as we don't attack each other or assassinate each other's character that's all i ask we are not gonna always agree y'all may not always agree what i even say but don't forget this i love my family i love us we've been hurt immensely you've been hurt i've been hurt we've been hurt globally i never lose sight of the pain that they continue in the subjugation that they continue to project on the royal family. So my royal family, as always, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashe.